first time. He really did scare me. I, I kid you not. But more and more he started coming on and I realized this person is extremely intelligent. I mean, beside his facade, the whole... Yeah. I was blowing bubbles over here. Did anybody see me blowing bubbles yes. with the children? I yeah. kind of wanted to join. Yeah. How many of you wanted to join? Ronnie eh. would have. Eh. Absolutely. <laughs> he would have been over here popping bubbles. Oh, yeah, he would have. Uh, and I love that about him. Fire. He lived life fire. the way I wish I could have lived life. What I wish I could be living life. Free from anybody's ideas of how he should be living his life. Uh -huh. he, he would... I had that mentality. I don't care what you think of me. No. Sort of. <laughs> oh, yeah. The first time I went over to his place, I was telling that young man back there about it. The first time he brought me over is because I, it was my first weekend no. without my children. No. My first weekend. And I couldn't deal with it. Come on over to my place. Okay, Ron. So I went over to his place. Walk into the place. There is this thing in the middle of the living room with yeah. these things coming off of it. Uh, yeah. What in the world is that? I said, it's very pretty. What is it? He said, oh, I'll tell you about that later. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the kitchen. There are stacks of Reese cups yeah. and containers of Mountain Dew. I'm like, Roddy, you, are you having a party? Oh, no, that's lunch. And Probably dinner. <laughs> Maybe breakfast tomorrow, too. <laughs> I probably have a couple bucks. Do you want to just go down and get something to eat? Yeah. Nah, this will work. All right, let me show you the bedroom. He walks in. Yeah. His bedroom was lined with computers. I mean, just everywhere you look, there's computers. Yeah. And this one's the master, and this one's the slave. And look, all the screens, he had them all linked together. Yeah. It was amazing. Now, this had to have been, oh, gosh. 17 years ago, 18 years ago? Hey, hey. This is before you. I would never work it, but yeah, it was before it, me. It was definitely before you. <laughs> but he had this, accidentally left out this um, inflatable play person. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> he had no idea he was going to bring me there. He had no idea. You know? And uh, all I kept thinking was, really? <laughs> really, Ronnie? He says, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, her personality is very dry, he says. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Then there was the time. I, I've never, I'm not a drinker. I've never been a smoker. I am the opposite of what you'd think would be a friend of Ronnie. But I look around, I see a lot of people I think are like me. The opposite of what you think would be Ronnie. It didn't matter to him what kind of person, what kind of things you really did. It's your person on the inside you like. He was the person that I knew. At any time, I could call him and say, even if I haven't spoken to him in years, Ronnie, things are bad for me, I need to get away. Oh, honey, come on out. He wouldn't ask me why, what happened, what, just come on out. You're, you're welcome to stay with me. I'll find a place for you. You can be with me at any time you need to be with me. And he would be there for me. And I'm selfish because I'm going to miss having that kind of person in my life. Are you going to miss having that kind of person in your life too? Somebody you know. You yeah. could call at a drop of a dime and he would be there for you. Yeah. I know I haven't seen you in years, but yeah, bring your kids, bring you. Come on down. You just, you just stay with me. You need, you need something, I'll get it for you. It didn't matter. So when he, when he told me he was ill, oh. I'm a nurse. Ronnie, come home. Come stay with me. I'll take care of you. Because you would me. I'm selfish, though. I'm really going to miss Ronnie. Thank you. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> more of these back here if you want some. <laughs> Anyone else? I'll say something real fast. Um, I got, I, I've always known Ronnie. My name is Sean, and as far back as I can remember, I moved to Alpha County when I was five, so I was on the school bus for first grade, and we were on the same route, uh, Renee and, and Renee and Ronnie, and 
Uh, I'm pretty sure Ronnie is the reason I don't believe in Santa Claus. Um, it was either him or James Spears. I don't know which one it was, but one of them, and I got home and Mom had to fess up that that was all a lie. Um, you know, my, my kids live in Boone County, so they have to bus kids separately, so elementary school kids aren't on a bus with high school kids. But, you know, here I was. I mean, Ronnie was only a year older than me, but we were on the bus with all these older kids. So we were on the bus many, many hours over our lifetime because it was almost an hour each way by the time we made all the stops. And I was one of the last ones off, and you all, and Yolanda got off before me, but we spent a lot of time together on the bus. And it didn't matter what our backgrounds were. It didn't matter... Um, um, who our friends were at school, we were one on the bus. Yolanda and I learned how to work Rubik's Cubes on the bus. We still know how to work Rubik's Cubes because we were on the bus for a long time. And, you know, we, we didn't sp I didn't spend a lot of time with Rini and Ronnie outside of the bus, um, but they're in my heart. And I got to know their hearts. They got to know my heart, hopefully. And we were just all one on the bus. And I wish the whole world could be like that all the time. It's not. Um, it's, it's, it's the real world. But uh, Ronnie, I think, always knew I cared about him. I think he did. And that makes me feel good. And I know Yolanda loved him. I think he loved you more than me. I'm pretty sure he did. But um, um, he, he, you, uh, <laughs> he, um, he was the best. So we're going to miss him. And I, I just wanted you to know those things about him, that, that we had some good times together. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to say something. Uh, <laughs> because, because, <laughs> Uh, Y'all don't know her. Her, her daughter is a UK cheerleader. Uh, Just throwing that out there. Oh. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Yeah. No. When uh, when I was asked if I, I would take part in <clears throat> Ronnie's memorial service, I said yeah. And the reason I said I've never met Ronnie. I've seen him a couple times, but I've never met him. But I know Renee. Uh, we've, we've got uh, some grandkids together. My son, her daughter, are married. And I know what kind of person Renee is. Not a perfect person, but somebody's got an awful big heart. And a big heart. Taking in kids and doing all kinds of things. And I know she had a twin, although they may have been quite different in a lot of their thoughts. There had to be some similarities as well, and I'm sure that big heart was part of it. And from what I've heard tonight from the testimony from you guys, that's exactly true. <clears throat> so tonight what I want to do is I want to read out of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. And it says this, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love, a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. And it's interesting that several thousand years ago when King Solomon penned these words, how appropriate it is for us today. For everything there is a season, a time to be born and a time to die. In an instant... <clears throat> What Solomon told us in, in that one in that one line there, when he says a time to be born and a time to die, he has expressed how fragile life really yeah. is, and life is truly fragile. Yeah. It truly is. <clears throat> but I want to ask the most important question tonight: What time is it? And that's what I want us to kind of think about tonight. What time is it? We know that we're creatures by time because of our watches. We make appointments, we set up schedules, we do all these different things, we put things on a calendar to make sure that we, we get to places on time and, and we're supposed to be where we're supposed to be when we're supposed to be there. 
And, and so we do that. We're, we are truly creatures of time. But I think maybe perhaps time ought to be measured by more than hours or days or years. Uh, yeah. Today we've already mentioned some dates. The date that Ronnie was born, which I, I messed up. <clears throat> and that was Renee's fault. That was my fault. <laughs> but we mentioned the time that he was born. We mentioned the date that he died. And we know if you was able to do the math and if, and if you listen to what I read in his obituary, he was 47 years of age. And there's some that's sitting here thinking, well, you know, that, that's a pretty long time. But those of us that have passed 47 or were in that time frame, that's a very short time, isn't it? It really is. It's a very short time. But here's what I think. I think life is not measured, nor should it be measured, by the years of accomplishment. What we've done and all those things. I think maybe perhaps our lives ought to be measured by the relationships that we have with others. Now, I don't know, there's very few of you in here, I know there's a lot of faces that I've recognized. Um, I've been to some graduation parties for Anthony and different ones, and Jackie and, and some of the family things, and so I've, I've seen some of the faces. Yeah, my hair. <clears throat> but, yeah, and uh, me and Mr. Zimmer got TJ a haircut. That was great. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know a lot of you. But, but here's what I know. How many of you in the last year... I want you to think about this. I don't want you to give me an answer. But in the last year, how many of you actually got to spend time with Ronnie? Very few in this room probably, if my guess is correct. And if you did get to spend time with him in the last year, it probably wasn't a lot of time. It wasn't near enough, was it, Renee? But look at the people that's here tonight. Because he impacted your life. Now, I'm much like Renee. And the fact that I don't know how much I believe about the, you know, the medicinal things that marijuana does, I'm not saying it doesn't. And that's not the point. Me and Ronnie could disagree in that, and that would be just fine. <clears throat> One thing what I've heard tonight is this. If I had different beliefs than Ronnie, Ronnie still would have took me on as a friend if I wanted to be his friend. And that speaks volumes of Ronnie. But what I want to do is I want you to think tonight, and don't worry about them kids. They're not bothering anybody. Right, okay? Right. They're kids. Right. They had life to the party, and this is a party, right? A celebration of Ronnie's life. Yeah. Well, oh. But let me ask you a question tonight. And I want everybody to think about this question and how this question apply, applies to you. Don't look at whoever you're sitting next to. Don't look who's in the back of the room. Don't think about the preacher. Think about yourself. What time is it for you today? What time is it for you? <clears throat> Again, as we read in Ecclesiastes, it says this, there's a time and a season for every event under heaven. There's a time to weep and a time to mourn. This is one of those times where we can mourn. And it's okay to mourn. There's some people say, oh, be strong. It's okay to grieve, folks. If you grieve, that's how you get healing. You're not going to heal if you never grieve. So there's a time to cry. TJ, when you broke down there a little bit, that's great. You've also laughed tonight, haven't you? You see, there's a time for that. So as we stop and we think about this, and we think about all the different things, I want you to do this. Don't deny your feelings. Death is a reality. Death hurts. And if anybody sitting here tonight says it doesn't, you've never experienced. Because it does hurt. It does hurt. But I want you to just take that just one step further. Just think about yourself. What time is it for you? But I also want you to think about this, that this is also a time of remembering. I'm glad you guys put those slideshows together. They, they were pretty neat. There's a couple pretty good pictures in there. But it is a time to remember. You know, I think about a funeral, and I think this of a funeral. And I've heard many preachers say this. A funeral is bittersweet. And it truly is, isn't it? It's bitter because of the loss of a loved one. But yet it's sweet because of the memories that you guys have shared tonight. So it truly is bittersweet. But I want to encourage you today to remember those good times. And I'm so thankful that our God gave us the capacity to remember. If I was to ask, I'm sure everybody in here would know somebody that's passed on. Somebody in your life other than just Ronnie. We all know somebody. And you can think back to the memories. Nobody can ever take those memories away from you. And that's a great blessing that God has given to you. But I think today is also a day of comfort. 
And, and again, I'm not going to take away from any grief, any mourning, anything that you guys are going through. I don't want to take from that. And I'm not going to tell you that everything's all right because it's not. It's not. Let's be honest. It's not. You hurt. There's some good memories. There's some bad memories. But I'm so thankful that God has given us relationships. And when that relationship is lost because of death, it hurts. It really does. But I want to speak about that comfort today. And I want to read out of John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. And this is what it says Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes unto the Father but by me. So there's three things that I think we can find in these verses of Scripture to help us and give us thoughts of comfort. And the first thing is this. He says there in the Scripture, he says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. And again, I know today is a day of sadness. I know that. A day of grief, a day of mourning. And we all understand that. But yet, even in the midst of a time like this, we can have peace. Because of the faith. Because of what we believe. <clears throat> we believe that even in the midst of a storm, even in the, the valley of the shadow of death, there can be pay, peace that passes all understanding. Oh. Psalm 23, probably the most quoted verse of Scripture in all of the Bible for a time and occasion like this. And it says this, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. You see, He's here. He's present tonight. If you believe in Him, if you trust in Him, He will grant you perfect peace. You say, well, John, you're not going through this. You don't know what you're talking about. I've been that road. I've been down that road. I lost a brother on his way to a funeral in a tragic car accident. Last year, I lost a daughter-in-law in a car accident. I know grief. Both my parents are gone. I know grief. And let me tell you, the reason I'm telling you what I know, and this ain't about me, but it's about what God can do for you and I. In the midst of that trial, those turmoils that was in my life, He gave me peace. Peace that passes all understanding. I can't explain it, folks. I really can't. That's why it's called the peace that passes all understanding. Um. In, the, in the midst of, of hurt, and I know you guys are going through hurt, God can give you comfort. He can give you peace. And only He can do that. Um. So I'm so thankful that He does that. But not only does He give us comfort by telling us that He's going to be with us and He's going to give us that peace, but also the second thing, the thought of comfort I want you to think about is He's prepared a place for us. He says in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you. The Bible says that in six days God created the heavens and the earth. In six days. Jesus has been gone some 2,000 years to prepare a place for you and I. Can you imagine what that place must look like? Oh. There's a lot of people say, John, you're crazy. God didn't, he didn't create it in six days, but that's what my Bible says and that's what I believe. I believe this Bible from, from the front to the back. If I didn't believe it, I can't pick and choose what I want to believe out of it. Either it's all true or none of it is. But in six days, and now Jesus is gone, and he says, I go to prepare a place for you. And He's preparing a place for you and I if we'll put our faith and trust in Him. TJ quoted Romans 5.8 and it says, <clears throat> God commended His love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So here's what I want to say to you tonight. And He mentioned His dad. Maybe His dad didn't make the best decision. But guess what? I haven't neither and you haven't either. We've all made some poor decisions. We've all done some things wrong. And God loved us so much he quoted John 3.16 as well. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. He loved us so much that He says, you know what? You don't have to clean your life up. You just come to Me just like you are. And is that not the way Ronnie received people? Come just like you are. Whether you're in a suit and a tie or you've got the leather on, you're on a Harley. It doesn't matter. And that's exactly what God wants you to do. 
So tonight as you're here, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter how bad you might think you are or how good you think you are, you need to come to Him. And He wants to prepare a place for you. I'll tell you what, He's, pre he's preparing a place for me. Not because of what I've done, but because of what He's done. I put my faith and trust in Him, and that's what you need to do tonight. You need to put your faith and trust in Him. And let me tell you, when you do that, He can give you comfort that this old world just can't understand. But the third thing, the final thing I want you to see about, about the comfort is, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I go to prepare a place for you. He also said, not only what I'm going to prepare a place for you, that I'm going to come again if you believe in me. So we need to believe in Him. We need to put our faith and trust in Him. You know, we're right at the Easter season. They call this the Passion Week. And it's a time where we look at the cross. What Jesus done for us on the cross. And how that He hung on that cross. You know why He did that? Because He loved me. And He loved you. He loved Ronnie. That's why He did that. And when them old Roman soldiers... Do you remember the story? How that Jesus was... was uh, he hung on a cross between two thieves. Do you remember the story? Yeah. And I had a guy tell me, he said, it probably went something like this, John. He said, them old Roman soldiers, they got, they knew they had to hang three guys on a cross. And they got to that first Roman soldier, and, or that first criminal, that first thief, and with every ounce of energy he had, he fought so he wouldn't get nailed to that cross. Because he knew once he was nailed to that cross, it was just a matter of time that he was going to die. It wasn't the pain from the cross that was going to kill him. It was the fact that as he hung on that cross, he would just suffocate because he couldn't hold himself up any longer. He would suffocate and die. So every ounce of energy, they finally got him on the cross. And they went to the next thief. And as they got to him, guess what he did? Just like the first guy. Every ounce of energy he had, he fought so he wouldn't be nailed to that cross. And over time, they finally got him got him put on the cross. And then they came to Jesus, and the Roman soldiers are wore out. And they say, man, we've got to do this again. And as they come to Jesus, I want you to know that Jesus didn't fight. Jesus willingly opened up His arms because He loved each and every one of you that are here tonight. And He gave His life. They didn't take His life. He gave it. So as we celebrate Easter, there's an empty cross. And more importantly, there's an empty tomb. You see, Jesus didn't just die. He was victorious over death. And so what we've got to do, folks, is we've got to put our faith and trust in Him. You want to see folks that have gone on that are in heaven today? There's only one way you can do that. That's through Jesus Christ. When He said in John, where we read John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes unto the Father but by Me. It ain't about being a Baptist, a Catholic, a, a Pentecostal. You put the church... In, it's not about that. It's about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You guys are here tonight because you had a personal relationship with Ronnie with Renee and, and the other family members. You had a personal relationship. But you ain't going to get to heaven because you knew Renee, because you knew Ronnie, because you might know me, because you know TJ. The only way you're going to get to heaven is because you put your faith and trust in Christ and Christ alone. Yeah. So you want to have a great reunion day, <clears throat> TJ, it's going to be a great reunion day one day for all those that have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. So tonight, the question is this. What time is it for you? Where are you at in your life? Something that's not yet been said that needs to be said. If you leave here tonight, or tomorrow, or next week, or next year, without knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, there's a real place called hell. And that's where you'll go. And that ain't popular. Folks, I'm telling you tonight, Ronnie doesn't want any of you to go to that place called hell. I can, I can guarantee you, Ronnie doesn't want any of you to go to that place called hell. He wants you to go to heaven. But the decision is yours. I was asked to, to, to help out in this. only thing I know, Renee, is preach Jesus. He's the one who gives life. You guys have done a great job lifting up Ronnie and tell how Ronnie meant what he meant to, your, to each of you in your different lives. And that's a great thing. We're going to continue in a time of fellowship. But, before we do, TJ, you come on up here. You remember when TJ spoke to us? He, he handed out a piece of paper. Oh, y'all pull this out? Yeah. Any, anybody want to read what it says? What there it says? Do whatever it takes. Yeah. Let nothing 
Some of them tell you to do stuff like forgive your enemies or uh, take the path less less traveled. It's words to live by. <laughs> and if you want to hear all of them, listen to uh, If Today Was Your Last Day by Nickelback. That's why I handed those out. How many of you have heard that phrase? <laughs> take, the, take the path that's less traveled. <laughs> you know, that is good advice. Yeah. And that's kind of a variation of what comes out of the Bible. Yeah. Because the Bible talks about the way to heaven is a narrow way. Yeah. And there's very few that go that way. Yeah. Yeah. Broad is the gate that leads to destruction. Yeah. So tonight we're going to close with a word of prayer. I want to thank you for being here. <clears throat> I want to thank you on behalf of the family for being here and showing your love and support. But listen, please, what time is it for you? I want to ask you this question we're closing prayer. If today was your last day here on earth, do you know where you'd spend eternity? If you don't know, I'm going to be around here a, while, a little while. I'd love to talk to you. It ain't about my way. It's about what I can show you in the Bible. God's way. That's what matters. So let's pray. Our Father and God, as we come to you once again, I want to thank you and praise you, Lord, for this time that we've had to come here and to celebrate the life that Ronnie lived. And Father, we thank you for the testimony that was given about his life how that He's touched so many different folks. We thank You, Lord, that as, as we looked at His life and, and how it was expressed, how He was so willing to give to people, how that He loved people, how that He didn't know a stranger, it reminds us, Lord, of how You are with us. Because no matter what we've done, no matter how good we've been, no matter how bad we've been, You've loved